This brings to mind a question that I had with the kids the other day. Um, have you ever seen that jewelry that has a little mustard seed trapped in like a piece of glass? I, I was curious about that mm. because of the text that it, yeah. it's referencing. Yeah, yeah. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. And then here I am taking a mustard seed and tying it around my neck. Like a charm. And what am I saying? That's, that's my question. Like, what yeah. am I saying? I'm not trying to critique it. I'm purely coming at it from a point of, well, I'm not really sure. I want to critique it. That I know what this means. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Because I can't move mountains. And so what am I reminding myself of, of how with weak your this faith little... Is. How weak your faith is. Well, well, the mustard seed text also talks about, if you have faith as small as a mountain, you can, or you can say to this, small as a mustard seed, you can say this mountain. Be removed, plant into the sea, which mm-hmm. is which is kind of what he says here. But right. is it apparently Jesus said similar things at different times about mm-hmm. different things, and so you really need to look at the context, right? Mm-hmm. So, what I want to emphasize here is that this one, which is about how if you believe what you ask for, you will have it. The context is him killing the fig tree, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, which is about his rejection mm-hmm. of the faithlessness of Israel, who had just welcomed him triumphantly. But then he has to go cleanse the temple where it's all a big game and show and they've made his uh, father's house of prayer a den of thieves. House of prayer, a den mm-hmm. of thieves. And what was the fig tree a symbol of for the Israel. Israelites? It was it's, just uh, yeah, a f- the nation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Everyone under his own vine Okay, and tree. so then he kills it. Oof. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. this is the end of the old covenant, the beginning of the new covenant. This is, um, I'm king, they're going to kill me. Uh, mm-hmm. This is uh, tear down this temple and three days I rebuild it. Yes, the temple is my body, but oh, by the way, the actual temple is going to get torn down too. Right. Like th- that's what's going on here, right? And in the midst of that, he says, if you believe what you ha- what you ask, you will have it. And I think Christians do well to ponder that deeply and not just dismiss it as prosperity gospel um, because it's, it's what the Bible says and mm-hmm. the context doesn't have any reason to say, well, he didn't mean it or something like that. Like, no, he, he really said it like... I, therefore, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And he, in other mm-hmm. places, asking you shall receive, seeking you will find. Of course, that's about the Holy Spirit. But well, okay, yes. So, mustard seed. The mustard seed context uh, is that in which he is talking to his disciples about how they don't believe, right? And mm-hmm. that if they only believe a very, very, very tiny amount then that would manifest itself through such things as this, which by the mm-hmm. way, they eventually they don't, I don't know that Peter ever moved mountains, but he healed people with a shadow. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's really a thing there, you know? And, and so um, the idea that you can't have faith is not what the teaching of the mustard seed is about. The teaching of the mustard seed is that we do not by nature have faith, mm-hmm. but Jesus came to give us faith. Right. So, I think what people want to mean when they put the mustard seed around their neck is that, is that I, I have faith. They're trying to say to themselves, I have faith. Now, I think it's a really weird way to do it. I think it's charm-like. I think it's superstitious. I think it's practically magical. I think it's really wrong and kind of dumb. But I think what they're trying to do is ultimately wanting to believe the passage. They're wanting to believe the passage. They're wanting to believe that they can have faith and they will be heard by God. Okay. Your baptism is this. Mm -hmm. And so for these, the sacramentarians who don't believe in the washing of regeneration, well, what else are they going to do but make up a sacrament? Mm -hmm. And it's not the only one. I mean, they've made up a few at the end of the time, right? I mean, we got to dedicate the babies to Jesus now. Well, where'd that come from? Your your head. Yeah. (laughs) You know, Uh, so... Uh, I, I, I want to critique it, but I also want to recognize that it's like the poor things are trying so hard. Mm-hmm. So when you see someone with that little, that, that poor person's trying so hard to believe they believe that's what they're doing. Okay. I see. I don't even know. I mean, that's, I that's do. Where they're trying I, so hard to believe they believe they just really want to believe they believe and their theology doesn't have a way for them to know they believe. Okay. And so I'm going to put this thing around my neck to try to remind me that I believe. I mean, look. 
I'm doing that in a sense. But I'll yeah. tell you what, I don't look at this and kind of like hope I believe. I look at this and go, oh, he's right, I'm baptized. Yeah. <sighs> right. As opposed to, okay, if only I can have that much faith, then, then I'll be okay. Right. It's, it's like a obsessive compulsive practice of trying to outsmart their own doubts. Okay. Okay. Through, yeah. Th- I mean, through a charm. Yeah.